Okay, so I'm going to talk about why digital national library labs need to engage with artists if they're not already. So, uh, the British Library is one of the most preeminent research libraries in the world, and one, if not the largest library in the world, <laughs> to be discussed. Um, uh, this means there is an expectation that we have a lot of stuff, especially in the physical realm, which is absolutely true, as you can see by these numbers. The numbers are actually made up, because we don't actually know exactly how much stuff we have, they're kind of guesses. But as you can see, these numbers are pretty mind-boggling. Um, when we talk to our users, or people who potentially could be our users, um, they often assume uh, all, a lot of this is digitized. And that's obviously far from the truth. Um, it's actually that figure, again, that's an estimate, about 3% of our stuff that's digitized. Um, uh, we, we are capturing um, born digital uh, collections too, but this also represents significant challenges in terms of reuse, uh, even just for research purposes, let alone for artistic reasons. Um, so we often have this expectation management challenge when we talk to people who want to use our collections. So um, as I, I brought up this slide earlier, trying to get that intersection in terms of what people are interested in and what collections we have involves a conversation, actually several conversations, and that's actually really quite hard work. But I want to argue that I think, as national libraries, it's a, a, res a moral responsibility to do this. We should all be doing this. Um, because what we want to do is create those touch points to inspire people to reuse our collections. Um, I personally believe that national libraries need to um, invest in this external in engagement, spreading the word, to increase the chances their digital collections will be used, to inspire generation after generation. Let's be honest. We haven't really cracked discoverability of our content problem yet. If I was going to be kind, let's say there are still many challenges to solve. Um, from the National Library's perspective, we are trying to maximise return on investment of digitising our collections and storing our born digital stuff. And uh, we know that there are significant challenges in doing this and costs involved compared to the thousands of years of experience we've had of uh, preserving our books and manuscripts. Um, at Labs, we have many conversations to get people to work with our digital collections. Uh, many end in many end nowhere. Just a nice conversation, but no actual reuse. Um, because often we don't have what they want. For many researchers, they just understandably just walk. Okay. My contention is that artists often come with a different perspective. They ask the question, what do you have? Instead of, this is what I'm interested in. Um, they are challenging customers, but often they can take you to that little magical moment that we all treasure. Um, I worked with this artist, David Normal, who we brought an artwork from Burning Man to the British Library, but for me, the magical moment was when we had to take the thing down. Um, one of the volunteers who came from California uh, made a Skype call to his girlfriend um, and they were talking, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, we were in the library, don't ask me what we were doing at 3 o'clock in the morning in the library, um, and she said, we told her that the Alice in Wonder Wonderland exhibition was on. And she said, oh my god, I would love to see that. And it soon became clear from the conversation that uh, she had severe health problems, which meant she would never be able to leave her house. So she would never physically be able to go to that exhibition. However, we took her on Skype and showed around the exhibition. And this was my magical moment of working with that artist. Uh, we even played some of the characters, and uh, we all, you know, we started crying, she started crying, it was all very emotional. Um, we are working on, um, we are now working on replicating some of the success we've had on roadshows, but to offer digital magical mystery experiences for creatives. Uh, we believe there's a whole industry out there which is developing around creating memorable, memorable experiences. We're going to take them on a magical mystery tour of our collections, and at some point <coughs> they will be inspired to use our collections, which in turn, one of them will inspire others, and the virtual circus circle will, will continue. Um, my working with artists has been a happy accident, but a good one. Artists have the potential to reach a wider audience, to include the public. 
they often create those inspirational and transcendent moments which really give that meaning we all crave for so much in our very short lives. Um, do you remember the first time you saw a piece of art that gave you goosebumps? For me, it was that one. It just blew me away the first time I saw that. I, I'm guessing you know what it is, so I'm just, just going to carry on. Um, that's why I believe that national libraries must work with artists. They will bring their collections alive and reach a much wider audience and have greater impact. Now I'm going to say something quite controversial. Um, there are some papers that perhaps academics will write that maybe two people in the world will read. Um, this, of course, could be the right two people, but I hope you get my point and I don't want to offend anybody. And what I'd like to do as a segue to the next presentation, I've been working uh, with an artist who I mentioned earlier on, Michael Takio Magruder, and uh, we've been working for about two and a half years, and Michael's going to have an exhibition at the library next year. So I'd like to introduce Michael as my next as the next speaker.